morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Is, is something different this week? It's like the world has turned around or something. I don't know. Anyway, we're in our series on uh, the book of James. It's called The World According to Jim. This is our last week. This is our last episode in James. And I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I know I have enjoyed it very much. Let me ask you a question. There's many voices in our world, many influences and what, what are the things that influence you? Or what are the voices that you listen to in your life? Because we have lots of voices vying for our attention, wanting us to go this way, or wanting us to go that way, or wanting us to, to follow this path, or follow that path, and make that decision. So I just want us to think about, what are the voices that I listen to? I think there's very, very many voices. I'm not sure very many is, is, is grammatically correct. But uh, anyway. What about the voice of our parents? No matter how old we are, or how far removed we are from living at home, even if our parents have passed, the voice of our parents is still very strong in our lives. That's why it's very important for us as parents to make sure that we're very careful how we talk and how, how we treat our kids. We have significant people in our life. I think it's always good to recognize who are the significant people in our life. And who are the ones that really influence us? We're influenced by our society, by our culture. Sometimes what we think is normal is normal for our culture. We go someplace else or read about some other culture, we realize that's not normal at all. That's just normal for us. I'm learning that as I have a uh, foreign exchange student in my house then. We do some weird stuff here in this country. <laughs> then there's the media. All the electronic information that we receive and all those things. And the fact is, I'm going to follow something. I'm going to go a certain direction. I'm going to be influenced by someone or somebody or some philosophy or something. And I want us to think about that. So that's the title for today. Which way do I go? Over here or no, this way. And if I pick a direction, how do I know I'm not being deceived? How do I know this person or this philosophy that I'm following is actually correct? Here's a video we're going to show. Let me introduce it here a second. Because you, so you know what's going on. The person looking in the mirror in this video, she's not looking in a mirror. She's looking in a window. And she's looking at her twin sister. Okay. Having said that, go ahead and play the video. It's also in German, so you have to read the subtitles. Thank <laughs> you. 
God has spoken and his words are available to us. And we need to listen. James goes on and says this. He says, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. So James says someone who, who hears the word but doesn't do it is like someone who looks in a mirror. And what do we do when we look in a mirror? Well, we fix our hair, or, or the ladies put on their makeup, or we pop a pencil or something like that. But he says, but James says the person who, who hears the word but does not listen, it's like someone who looks at himself or herself and then immediately turns away and doesn't remember what they should be doing for themselves. But James also goes on to say in the next verse, it says, but the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. So James says that the one who looks into this perfect law, this word that God has given to us, this word that God has spoken to us, and if he obeys that, then he will be blessed in all that he does. Well, the question is, do I believe that? Is that the voice that I listen to? Should I trust that Bible, that book? I meant to have it up here, but I looked at my briefcase. But pretend I'm holding a Bible right now. Do I, do I believe this book? Or is it just a, a religious book, an ancient book that has some good ideas, that perhaps we move beyond it? Perhaps in some ways it's irrelevant or, or not quite up to date. Just have some, or is it really the way that I should go? Is it the word that God has spoken to us? And even though there might be some clashes between our culture, our society, and what the Bible says, well, who do I pick? It can be a lot easier to pick what society says. But what am I going to pick? Which way am I going to go? Well, I think you, know, you all know where I stand on this, right? So what I want to talk about is talk about the Bible. And the first point is that the Bible is truly unique. And your first blank is that, that the Bible is unique in its circulation. That means it sells a lot of copies. Now, there's the New York Times bestseller list. The Bible has never been on the New York Times bestseller list. Do you know why that is? Because it would be number one every month of every year. The Bible sells about 100 million copies every year. Now, back in 2003, there was a very popular book that was sold. It was called The Da Vinci Code. Anybody ever read that one? Am I reading? Okay. Did I see the movie? Okay, I saw the movie. It sold 80 million copies. That's a lot of copies. It was on the number one bestseller list at the top for month after month. I checked on Amazon in this last week. On Amazon, it's ranked at 11,150. So its popularity is waning. But every year, every single year, the Bible is the number one seller 
worldwide. I can say 100 million copies sold. That's how many are sold. But there's organizations that give the Bible away. The Gideons gives away a million copies of the Bible every week to 182 countries. Other Bible societies give away 19 million every year. There's 577 million portions of the Bible that are distributed every year on top of everything else. By far, why the Bible is the most circulated book in the world. Revelation 14, 6 says this, Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to, to, to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. The Bible has been translated in 2,500 languages. There are still 4,000 more languages to go, so we're not quite there yet. But the Bible is the most circulated, the most translated Bible book in the history of the world. So it's unique in its circulation, but also something else. It's unique in its preservation. That little scrap of paper up there, which is about probably about this big, this is a papyrus, which is ancient paper. That is probably the most hallowed scrap of paper in Christendom. Because that little piece of paper is the oldest fragment of a manuscript of the New Testament that we have um, from about 95 AD. Probably within five to ten years of the